that. So, uh, welcome, good afternoon to another session on the Talking Asperger's and more with Andrew. And um, today we're going to talk about something that came up in conversation at the back end of last year, and that's sensory issues. Um, I'm sure we've all have certain things that can trigger us and certain things that we don't like doing or being in and um, two of my my sensory triggers are bright lights and loud noise and um the, the loud noise i'll deal with loud noise first that with the exception of when i'm listening to rock music or in the days before covid could go to a concert and then I would quite like because I kind of set myself up for I'm going to be it's going to be noisy for two hours at this concert. It's stuff I like listening to. So I kind of um, prepare myself for the onslaught of, of the noise. But in a normal everyday work situation, um, noise can be very distracting and, and very annoying and um, to the point where I can't focus and can't concentrate. And so it's not just. A sort of a background annoyance but if i'm in an office environment working if there's two or three people having a conversation in front of my desk or nearby that can become grating and that that can be difficult and then you multiply that a few more times when you've got three or four different people and two or three people on the telephone and suddenly you've just got this wall of noise and there's nothing i can do to filter it out uh, back in those days when when I didn't know I had Asperger's but I think now that there, there's there's becoming more of a recognition that 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 people with on the spectrum do have certain triggers and um, noise cancelling headphones can be very good at just taking away that background clutter that that's that's there so that you can focus and do what you what you're doing so so noise is what I um, I, I said this to Laura. We had a, a, a messenger, messenger uh, uh, LinkedIn conversation uh, earlier on, and if I'm trying to find directions, if I'm trying to get directions to go somewhere, or I'm trying to follow directions to go somewhere, I will turn the radio down so that I can concentrate on where I'm going. And part of that is Leslie's not the greatest map reader in the world, so I'm trying to help her read the map and read the directions as well as concentrate on the driving. But I have to turn the radio down. And I think it's really bizarre that in order to get that concentration to, to which junction do I need on the motorway and do I going left or right when I get to the roundabout, it I have to turn the radio down. And it's quite, I find it quite, quite, sort of strange and quite peculiar that, that I have to do that but it works and, and I can then focus and concentrate on what I'm doing but and, and the other one is bright lights um, offices with with big strip lighting I think oh I can it's so intense the light that that it really does um, give me it gives me a headache it really does give me a headache bright lights and um, I used to have reactive photo uh, reactive photosensitive lenses on my glasses so that if i was outside they would go like a pair of sunglasses um and that would take away some of the 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 bright sunlight if i was out walking about out and out in sun in, in the sunshine and uh, these sorts of things they, they 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 make a difference to to how you can function and i think some people who who don't have the sensitivity you think oh come on it's only it's only a bit of noise what, what's the problem and and i think trying to get across to people that actually you have a sensitivity to, to bright lights or noise or uh, a sensitivity to certain uh, fabrics i know uh, i worked in some place where the, the the carpet was a very strange carpet and if you slid your feet along the carpet and went close to a metal filing cabinet, you would get a spark of static electricity coming off it because the, the carpet might have been a nylon carpet for, for wear rather than a wool one. And just the scuffing of your feet on it, would, would you would get the sparks of static. And that, that would really, you know, that would, that would, that would really grate, that would really get me on edge. So, so I was, I was wondering whether, whether I know it's something Laura brought up last year, but I'm wondering whether, you have sensory issues and, and how you deal with it is it is it just getting a pair of sunglasses or or noise cancelling headphones or, or are there other things that you can do i'm interested to, to see that 
Laura, perhaps uh, perhaps you go first. You asked the question last year. Okay, so um, as for sensations, the one I experience the most usually is when uh, I am at the table with uh, more than two people usually. So maybe four or five, six people all around the table talking together. Uh, what I feel after a while is like um, um, hearing different sounds all coming at all coming at once and getting mixed or confused in my head, and at the same time the light bothers me. Uh, so I may start stimming a little bit, like I was like the intake is too much for me. Yeah, that's what I experience um, more often. But I remember when I was in China, for example, in China, uh, everywhere it's full of lights, LED lights, especially in shopping malls. Yeah. And that was very, very tiring for me and disturbing. Yeah, Fortunately, I, yeah. now in Italy, it's not the same because I live in the countryside as well. So it's not going to bother me anymore. But in a big city, I remember in the big city was very, very... Um, uh, annoying mm, to see all these LED lights everywhere, white lights mostly. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I, I can I can understand that light. When you go out into the countryside and you and at night time you can actually see the sky clearly and the stars and things like that. Mm -hmm. You you realize when you're back in in city life in town and city life how much light pollution there is in in mm -hmm. in just every every day that we do and and and. I can I can completely understand where you're coming from there, Laura. Yeah, mm -hmm. Amy, do you have similar issues? Yeah, I just uh, make some notes as we were going on because it's interesting. Different types of noises, and may, you may have some a better idea on why that is. Um, for example, the the things that will trigger me more are sudden noises or high pitch noises. Like, for instance, uh, I've got a colleague who walks into the office whistling. <laughs> When he whistles, I, I almost want to hide under the table. It, it's for me. It, it uh, that's really. It makes me feel really nervous. And um, um, then, um, back in um, cafes or where there's a lot of people meeting, maybe it's just more than two people. But if people are all shouting together, they seem to for me. They seem to be quite often um, or people with high pitched voices that really mm. great that goes through like it's almost like a um a pain causes a pain in my head yeah, yeah. that's yeah. the thing same as whistling um I, I find that sort of thing I, I can easily get a headache with um mm. those sort of high pitch noises or especially if it's sudden if there's like a background noise like a road and i might be in a cafe next to the road you can get used to the same frequency but it's a sudden noise and the high pitch noises okay then um, you, you mentioned, um, Laura, about um, being in a bar or being somewhere at a table with more, mm -hmm. a few people and the sounds all coming together. Well, I find that if that, I'm in a group of more than four or five people or in a meeting with more four, four or five people, if there are people talking together, two yeah. people talking together, I find that, that sometimes I get confused because I'm almost hearing both, what both of them are saying, almost as one sentence, like that everything comes together all the words like a, in a soup rather than be able to differentiate what he's saying what he's saying it's, it all comes up to me at once so I um I, I struggle a little bit with that um lights uh for me I, I remember I went to the local shopping center with my daughter at um, Christmas I don't normally go to shopping centers but as soon as you open the door there's the the normal lights which are um bright enough as it is and then the Christmas lights Mm. And it's like a wall of um yeah. wall of light and it, that's um um i find that very uncomfortable mm -hmm. um i remember the experience when i was small with the two of them together noises and lights my parents took me to a firework display and then this is when i was very young i had no idea but um that um i was autistic but um um i remember watching this fire display and then the next minute i was um, sat with my my hands over my ears behind a tractor wheel, or, because my parents were saying, "What? Come on, come look at the fireworks!" I just, I, I can't um, because I, I didn't know why, but I I just couldn't bear the the lights and the the sound. Um, yeah. 
Um, okay, just one last point. There's another sensory thing which gets to me is um, uh, both firstly some clothing on me, on my skin, but also uh, something which really I find difficult. It's things around my neck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My neck and then sometimes masks as well. If it touches my neck here, I can end up choking or coughing and then people will think I have COVID. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> true, uh, true. I understand the one with masks. I... I, I detest wearing balaclavas. I just feel as though I'm just, just, oh, it's just enclosed. It feels like it's something so constricting. Um, and, and other ones, um, if you're sitting, as you say, sitting, at, sitting in the cafe or something like that, or you're sitting at work, and then a bus puts his brakes on and he's got a squeaky brake and it's really high pitched. That absolutely goes through me. And the, the, some of those noises, I actually feel as though my eardrum is painful. It, it actually not just the headache that it can cause but the the pain of the noise it actually feels like a pain um, yeah, for me it feels like a pain yes or almost if someone's almost stabbing you in the head or, or, or it, it, it's um but you mentioned concerts earlier and i find concerts to, to be slightly different i've been to concerts you know big concert the last one i went to was in um uh at one of us I went to see Roger Waters and um, there's lots of people there, no noise and lights, but for me, it's a different experience. And um, maybe it's because I'm passionate about that sort of music, but um, it's a very different, for some reason, it's a different experience. I, I, I didn't feel the same yeah. sort of um, reaction as I would at another, other types of noises or lights or people around. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that. I'm quite, I, I enjoy concerts, but because I'm, it's as though I've psyched myself up and I'm prepared. And so I look forward to that, that, Maybe. that type of noise. Um, one of the things you mentioned, Damien, is meetings. I, uh, one of my pet hates was, was having more than one person speaking in a meeting and you'd be sitting there and you're the, the, the chairman or the, the, the usually the client is, is addressing the meeting and then down the end, at the other end of the table, someone else is having another conversation, and yeah, I, I, that. I, from a from a just just good manners, that's rude, and I and I I, I hate that from a, from a manners point of view, and but b, what are we supposed to do? You know, I'm, I'm a client would frequently say, gentlemen, because unfortunately it was mostly men in the in the in the room, gentlemen, let's have one meeting here, please, and the, he would get quite stroppy about it, and quite rightly so. So it, yeah, I, I, I find some of those things socially rude, and and the other one is, before COVID came, I was doing a lot of in uh, in person networking to to start and build my business up, and so I would go into a room of thirty or forty people, and they would generally be in groups of two or three, and having many conversations so there could be 10 or 12 or 15 conversations going on and i've walked into this wall of noise this cacophony of indistinguishable jabber mm -hmm. and and it really takes it really took some courage to actually you know take a deep breath just at the door and think okay i'm going in and and boom this wall of of, of noise and, and i i really i really struggled with that and would really have to concentrate and focus on what I was doing and then try and have one conversation with one or two people in a little mini group rather than try and fathom out what's going on elsewhere in the room but I would pick up different things from as Damien said pick up different parts of different conversations and you could get overwhelmed very quickly and and I could only take that sort of environment for just a short while because it would it would just be too much it would just be too much. Uh, what about the sound of kitchenware? Maybe like, a, I don't know, a knife or a fork against a plate, or maybe something that falls, something like, a, I don't know, um, a, a small pot or, or something, whatever, kitchenware, because I, I find it very irritating. Yeah, D dropping... <laughs> Dropping cutlery on the draining board, on a metal draining board, or um, or dropping the, the lid of a saucepan on a metal draining board or the floor, it can absolutely jar completely. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I get I that. I agree. Yeah. That. We, we ought to find some way of having 
dampeners on our draining boards or something like that. <laughs> that's that's actually an interesting idea. Um, but yeah, the, the sudden sudden noise, as Damien said, um, can be very uh, jarring, very painful, um, and losing focus and losing concentration. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I remember when I was little, because Damien made me think about my childhood. When I was little, uh, I was living in this house because this house is my grandma's house and she was looking after me in the afternoon. I remember that we were sitting in the, like around the table here in the kitchen and right next to the house, there is a church. And I remember that every time the church bells were uh, ringing, I was getting like really scared and I, was, I started crying every day, every time the bells started uh, ringing basically. And uh, it was really scary for me when I was little. Uh, I don't know if this has anything to do with my sensory issues, mm, mm. but it may be. Yeah, church bells, again, it's very loud and it's very sudden. Yeah. Um, I, I remember one time, I can't remember what the situation was. I was quite young, but someone had a loud hailer and, and I didn't know what a loud hailer was. And suddenly this person spoke into a loud hailer and this booming noise just amplified because that's what amplified his voice so loud. It was like, ow, and it makes you almost want to shrink away from it. And it was quite bizarre. So if I see people with loud hailers, I generally tend to try and get away from them as quickly as possible. Because it's just such a uh, such a big, overwhelming noise. Yeah, mm. yeah. Where, where, where I am um, in the local cafe, sometimes someone will come in with one of those machines to count money from uh, uh, one of these uh, game machines, whatever. So they put the money in the top, and then they they have a handle which they wind round, and the money that drops down. And and when I see this person coming to the cafe, I think I've got to go <laughs> because the noise of that money just dropping is just yeah, we, 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 we have those in some supermarkets sometimes where people will just chuck a bundle of change in, it gets sorted and tells you you've got £12.60 or something and then it gives you in currency. Um, yeah, that, that can be quite that can be quite uh, an interesting noise. And um, yeah, I, I think it's I think it's fascinating how certain people get so such a sensitivity to to, to the noise. Um, in a, in a work environment, it can be very difficult because w without wanting to try and stigmatize someone um, on the spectrum, actually the best place that, that, that might be the best place to put them or for them to have their desk is the quiet, slightly darker corner um, without thinking, oh, it's the person with Asperger's, so we'll stick them in the corner in a, in a negative kind of, let's just get them out of the way kind of way rather than actually that slightly darker corner away from the windows and the, the sunlight where it's a bit quieter um, and a bit darker could actually be a very good place for them to be because this, it's not so abrupt on their senses but trying to explain that to people without getting the sense of Oh, you're just putting me in the corner because I've got Asperger's or I've got <laughs> such and such. It, you, you've got to handle that one a bit delicately. Otherwise, um, you know, you're ostracizing someone rather than finding them the best environment for them to work in. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. I, I wanted to share something else with you, and I, and I didn't say it at the beginning. Um, it's um, the, the, the recordings go on my YouTube channel and um, so that anyone can look at them from, for, for future use, if that's okay with everyone. And the other thing, you may have noticed I've got a different background on my screen. Um, I've been rebranding this last couple of weeks and I've had someone helping me rebrand and he's come up with a couple of... Um, well, Asperger's superheroes was one of the things that I was uh, that I do talk about. People with Asperger's being superheroes, they have amazing skills and abilities in certain areas. But the other one, because I was a geologist for 23 years, he said, "Is there something about rocks or something about a geologist that 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 would be appropriate for you?" And he said, "Been talking to you for quite some time now, and I, I know him through uh, an organisation." And he said. You're kind of resilient guy. You, you, so, what about rock solid resilience? So, so that's why the rock solid resilience is up there. But 
Um, if you're interested in in what I do, my, I have a new website as well, which is aspergersmatters.com. So there's more interesting information, hopefully interesting information on there. Um, I, 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 I really enjoy having these these weekly Zoom calls, but I wanted to just say that if if anyone wanted to extend this to a more private conversation, I'm quite happy to do that for you know for for a short period of time, just to help someone out. But other than that, I do provide coaching and speaking services. So if anyone wants to know what sort of services I do, I can I can drop a link in the chat. But I don't don't want to be sort of heavy with that because I enjoy what we have as a group where we're, we're supporting each other and helping each other out. So I, I appreciate that, but I just thought I'd mention that I, uh, I have gone through a rebranding and you can find, you can send us the link. We can just, okay. Thank you. I'll do that. I'll put it in the chat. Where are we? Where's the chat? Do, do, do. So my new website is, aspergersmatters.com and a link to my other professional services is should be just coming up now no it's not paste again very oh, nice so anyway if if, if, uh, if you if you want to take a look at that then please do so mm -hmm. are there any other sort of sensory sensory things that that uh, might seem a little left field but are things that concern you because i'm interested to know what sort of um things you know sen what sort of sensory things can can alarm you and, and cause you difficulty uh, i would say maybe forklets uh woolen woolen uh sweaters and tags in general. Yeah. Um, and also uh, loud voices. For example, I've got, well, my husband, when he speaks, he's very loud. <laughs> he has a very loud voice. I always have to tell him, just slow your voice, slow your voice. But it's really unintentional. <laughs> for him yeah. And yeah it's a bit of a problem when you live together with a person who can't really <laughs> love the tone of his voice <laughs> that's that's an interesting one isn't it yeah yeah i love you to bits but I'm, I'm, your voice can be quite irritating sometimes <laughs> I, I used to get told as a kid that i would talk too much and talk too loudly and from time to time, some of the other kids would come up and they would turn, they would pretend to turn down a volume button on the side of my neck and say, you're talking too loudly and too much. And they would talk, pretend to turn this button down on my neck. I thought it was quite bizarre because I didn't think I talked loudly, but apparently I used to talk quite loudly. But it was interesting. But um, yeah, squeaky brakes on cars and buses. Um, and I, I agree with you on fabrics. Uh, the the labels on your on the back of your shirt or your jumper labels, um, yeah. it, it feels like a cactus you've got there rather than just a, a little piece of fabric yeah digging into you quite quite interesting yeah any other sort of visual uh, signals Vis visual sensory issues I, I i know when we're watching tv and adverts come on i always mute them i always for two reasons a I don't particularly like adverts and they're not advertising things I'm interested in, but, but B, I just don't like the noise and the sounds of adverts because they can sometimes have shrill noises and sudden noises. So we quite often mute them or even um, put the screen on blank onto the menu so that we can see what's on the television menu rather than actually watch the, uh, watch, watch, the, watch the adverts. So that's, that's, that's a, uh, that's something that Leslie and I both do. As soon as the adverts come on, we, we mute we mute the noise. Yeah. What about taste and smell, guys? Because I have no sensory issues in terms of taste and smell. But what about you? There's there's certain there's certain tastes I don't like and certain um, textures. Um, I I I hate celery. The texture of celery is 
Oh, that really, that, that can absolutely, there's celery in some, cel- I can't do that. That fibrous, wiry, yuck. No, I can't, can't yeah. do, can't do celery. No. I, I agree <laughs> with that. I used to hate celery when I was a kid, but now I can, I can eat, chew a little bit, at least <laughs> chew it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, celery, that's an interesting one, celery. Celery. Mm-hmm. Um, other other foods. Um, no, I, I think I'm texture. I think texture wise, I'm okay with most foods, but just just celery. Um, just for some bizarre reason, I, I I don't like the sound it makes when you crunch it, but it's that texture on your teeth that no, I really really don't like that. So what about in, I, smell? The smell of, uh, I don't know, maybe perfumes. When people put on perfumes, uh, mm-hmm. is that okay with you? I don't like strong perfume mm. smells. But that's mm. true, yeah. Sometimes you can, in some shops, or you, you can, um, but I don't tend to go in many shops. So I, I avoid shops because of everything, the, from the sounds to the lights to the number of people. So I'm, I'm a... Yeah, I, 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 you've reminded me of one there, Laura. Um, Leslie likes to buy a certain type of soap from, oh, I don't know what it's called, but it's a, it's a shop that smell, sells soaps, mostly on just soaps. And so I can't go in it. I just, there's too much smell. So I, I, I wait outside while she goes in and buys these smelly things. But the, the, just the smell of walking past that with that shop with the door open, it, 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 it's too much it's an assault on my on my yeah you're right the, the smell of of too much soaps and, and and strong perfumes is 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 one that catches me as well it tends to catch me in the back of my throat as well the perfumes for some reason yeah is that lush the shop i think it is i think yeah. it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay they're supposed to be very good but i've never been <laughs> uh, Leslie says it's lovely, but uh, yeah, my daughter likes Lush, and, and they they sell a lot of vegan products as well. So she, my daughter's yes. vegan. And, yes. Um, yeah, yeah. But, uh, so I I I, I, so, I I sometimes have a sensitivity to touch on my skin. Um, if people touch. It, 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 it's a very, very, very soft touch on my skin can be quite irritating. Yes. Um, I, I agree. Uh, a very soft touch. That's an interesting one. No, it's true. The same with me. If uh, someone grabs it, it's, it's got to be hard grab or whatever. Or yeah. You know, like a very soft touch. I, I can jump. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's... yeah. I don't know what that is, but uh, I, I, I have that. Uh, so there's certain uh, my feet oh you've got me onto my feet i i absolutely have a thing about feet i cannot bear my feet being touched by anyone unless as, as damage just said it's a full-on heavy grab if someone tries to touch my feet very gently i no that's a, that's a big no-no for me I, I really can't do that i i don't know what it is but um no if you're going to touch my feet be nice and firm with it but don't to gently caress my feet that is that really does um get, get me going that, that, that's something i really don't like it's very uncomfortable very uncomfortable for some reason uh do people in scotland or england um uh, usually like touch people when they speak to them like in italy that may happen someone touches your arm or your shoulder while they're speaking to you that's something I don't really like. <laughs> I don't know about you. I think does this I, happen to you? I think sometimes it does, but I don't think it's as much as as as, as in mainland Europe. I think um, I, it, it, I've I've worked overseas in Brunei and with a lot of people from all sorts of nationalities and people who are Bangladeshi and Indian. They will quite happily not hold your hand but hold your wrist. They actually, if they want you to come with them, they will, they will take you by the wrist and 
just escort you off and it's all very innocent and perfectly normal to them but i found it very strange when i would see and they would do it in a chain of people so there could be four or five people all in the chain all held together by someone holding the person in front's wrist and i thought that was quite bizarre until someone did it to me and it was actually quite reassuring that they knew where they were going and i didn't and so they took me by the took me, took me by the wrist and and walked off and showed me where they were going and so that's a that's a cultural thing in that part of the world but i thought it was quite bizarre until it happened and then it was just a normal everyday thing that they do we might take someone's hand they would take you by the wrist it was quite bizarre it was quite fascinating actually to watch and what about a perception of pain when you feel pain do you feel it too much or too little not tell maybe <laughs> i i i've been told i have a strange relationship with pain and and threat and risk um uh i i i, I it's difficult to judge certainly i certainly do feel pain when i when i had gallstones that was the most pain i've ever been in in my life um that was absolutely just horrendous um and that that even beats the time when I smashed my back up crashing into a rock paragliding um, but gallstones was was exceptionally painful but um, I don't know I don't know it's difficult to judge whether you have a, a high or a low pain threshold compared to mm. other people it's, it's, yeah, I, I couldn't say about pain because yeah. it's difficult to say whether I'm different from anyone else but when I feel mm. pain just as, it, as it is really it. difficult it is really difficult but I have to say that for example uh, I realized I had a, a, an infection uh, last summer and I, I knew about that only after seven months. So I actually, I was actually, I, I had this infection for seven months and I didn't even realize it, you know, so probably I was not feeling so unwell to mm -hmm. recognize it. I don't know. That's interesting. I wonder, my, yeah, I asked myself whether my pain threshold was too low to realize mm -hmm. that i had a problem i don't know that's interesting i i don't know the answer to that one um no it's very subjective right i i, I think it is i think it is mm -hmm. and and i think sometimes the circumstances of of who you're with um mm -hmm can influence how you how you relate or how you reflect your pain sometimes with with certain people you 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 know you're not going to get any sympathy so you just just you just don't say much about it the circumstance yeah yeah i think circumstance dictates sometimes how you relate to pain yeah i'm i'm conscious of time i can't believe we've we've, we've just got about two minutes left so um I wanted to thank you for coming on. It was uh, very interesting talking to you uh, today about sensory issues because I think it is something that 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 we all uh, have have our own issues with and relationship with, and it's interesting to to to, to hear how you know how individual ones then remind you that that. that you might have them yourself, like the labels on your neck and certain fabrics and and and, and the blessed celery. So. Um, but uh, thank you very much for coming on the call today. Um, and uh, I'll be sticking it sticking on the YouTube channel. And on Friday, I will post what next week's going to be. And I haven't decided yet. I'll have to see what takes my mind, unless anyone's got any suggestions for, for next week. If, if you do, drop me a line. Uh, you can email me or uh, uh, messenger me on uh LinkedIn, that would be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, sure. Yeah, but uh, other than that, thank you very much for coming. I'm going to turn off the record.